Hello everybody and welcome to my next X C Sharp XNA tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning about an advanced, uh, well not advanced subject, but a really important subject called bounding boss collision. And what bounding boss collision is, it's collision between two different rectangular areas, okay? Uh, so uh, bounding boss collision, uh, if you want to know, is the most common type of collision in 2D games. Uh, all 2D games, or most, the majority of them, involve collision, and most of them have bounding boss collision. There are indeed other types of collision, like pixel collision or circular collision, uh, but bounding boss collision is the most common. Uh, the most accurate is pixel collision, but uh, it requires a lot from the hardware and only should be used in uh, in situations when they are, are like explicit need, explicitly needed. Okay, but in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you uh, the regular method of handling uh, bounding boss collision and the X and A way of handling it, or like I call the easy way. Uh, so, uh, let us uh, get into it. So, basically, an overview of the code I have right now. I basically have two sprites, um, the position for the player sprite, the key state, uh, so I can actually move the player. Uh, the the color of the player so when we collide with the enemy the player is going to change color and the move speed of the player so in the load content uh this the both the player and the enemy sprite or come from the same sprite all i'm going to do is just change the color of them and in the update uh we get the key states uh with the get the keyboard state sorry we check for all directions and we alter the position accordingly and then we draw the player according to the position, our position vector and our player's color. And we draw the enemy at the coordinate 100, 100, and this color is black, or we tint it to the color black. So how are we going to handle bounding box collision? So first of all, let's go to paint.net. So first of all, what we want to check is for not collision, for non-collision. So what we want to do is to check if the player is to the left of the enemy, therefore there is no collision if the player is to the right of the enemy and I know you can't see the other side of the box but if it's at the right side of the enemy there is no collision if it's above the enemy there's no collision and if it's below the enemy there's no collision but if it is touching it then there is a collision and we're going to uh, figure out how to do it using this code right here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put if position dot x plus sprite one that is our our actual player so sprite one dot width is less than a hundred and remember a hunt um the play the enemy's position is at the coordinate a hundred a hundred so this is saying if the player is to the left of the enemy and then we check to see if the player is to the right of the enemy so if it's greater than sprite two dot width and then now we have to check if the enemy is, is the player is above the enemy. So, uh, the player 100 plus sprite 2 dot width. So we do player position y plus sprite 1 dot height this time is less than 100 because the, the enemy's y position is at corner 100. And then we do this for the, uh, if the player is below the enemy. So player is greater than sprite two dot height. Okay, so if it is not touching the enemy, then there is no collision. And if there's no collision, then we're gonna change the players. We're gonna keep the player's color at color white. Else, there is a collision, and then we're gonna change the color to color dot turquoise the reason why I choose turquoise is because if you tint it to a different color it might not always tint you might not actually see much of a distant difference so when I tint it to a turquoise color the player will the player is red right now by default and it, it will look a kind of brownish color when, once we tint it uh, so let's run this program now to see what we get So if the player touches the enemy, notice that the player's color changes to a brownish color. Okay, so uh, that is bounding box collision. So uh, if if you want to use like the code from the spread animation tutorial or whatever, you can say that if it collides, uh, you can calculate the direction. So say you have like a direction 
or or like say say you're calculating uh if it's facing down or whatever uh when you're doing your current frame so you could say if like current frame equals the down or whatever and it collides or something uh then therefore and then therefore you could say that the player doesn't move anymore or the player y subtract equals blah 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 whatever for collides of the wall or something if you don't want the player to move through the wall etc etc so there's different things you can do if there's not a collision or if there is a collision and this method is to uh, help you uh, handle it and you can put all this stuff in a method if you want so if you want to like have a private method uh, and then you would in the in the parameters you have like you get the player's position or you could get a vector sorry you could get a vector to uh player and you could get a vector to enemy's position and then what you would do is do like player dot x whatever blah 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 and you have to get the players width uh whatever you could do a vector to uh di player dimensions etc etc and you could you could do that through a method if you like because most likely you're going to be doing it through a method or something so if you want to put it in a method it's up to you uh how you want to handle it but yeah so that is one method to handle it and this is the x and a or the easy way now just because we use x and a doesn't mean we always use the x and a way if you don't know how to do bounding box collision this way then learn it do not use the way i'm about to show you now learn this method first and then use the easy way later because when you're using different apis different apis aren't going to have the functionality or might not have the functionality that we're going to use right here or you're going to have to make that functionality by yourself which you're probably not going to want to do so learn this method right here first which is the proper way to handle it and then we're going to learn the other use the other way once you gain experience with this method so i'm going to comment this out right now and what we're going to do is we're going to create two rectangles okay so one rectangle is going to represent the player and one's going to represent the enemy okay so player one or i'll just put player and enemy okay so uh under base initialize we're going to put enemy new rectangle the player's coordinates 100 by 100 and the i mean the the enemy's width is sprite 2 dot width and sprite 2 dot height And why do I say under initialize? Once the initialize is called, it calls the load content method as well. So and therefore it will load the sprites, it will load the, the player and the enemy sprites, and therefore it will have the it will have the property stored like the width and the height. If we do this above the base dot initialize, and therefore it's not gonna know what the sprite's width and height is yet because it hasn't loaded it yet, and therefore you'll run into a compiler a runtime error. So uh, you might be saying why not do this in the load content method or whatever. You can do it if you want but I believe since we're initializing something it should go in the initialize method. But whatever suits your needs it's up to you. So uh, the reason why I'm not putting the player one in there is because the player moves every single update or you can move the player every single update. And therefore the rectangle might change every um might change during a certain update the enemy position is static and there's no point in putting this in the update method if it's going to remain static if it's not going to move then there's no point of trying to do new rectangle every single time if all the parameters are going to remain the same it's not going to affect our productivity of our program it's just common is good programming practice and larger programs when space is critical you're going to want to minimize the, or or like when the functionality or speed is critical you're not going to want to uh, update something that does not need to be updated so this is just a good programming practice so anyways in our updates in our update method after we've uh, altered our player's position after the keyboard stuff we're going to put players equal to new rectangle so remember we have to cast it to an integer since the position is uh of the float type of the float type and the rectangle needs to be an integer type so we do uh position y and we need to get this sprite one sorry sprite one dot width and sprite one dot height and i'm not sure if you can actually see that so 
so yeah you get the sprite one dot height okay and we store it right there and so I think somebody in one of my earlier videos was asking if the rectangle can uh, contain floats and stuff like that for the sprite animation uh, I never really looked into that but I, I don't believe that you could take float value so you'd have to alter it to do it your own way if you want to take in float values for whatever reason okay but so then we stored our players rectangle there so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do if player dot intersects intersects and then we say enemy so if our player collides with the enemy or intersects with the enemy therefore there's a collision so we do player colors equal to color dot turquoise and else if there's no collision then we just set the player's color equal to white so this is self-explanatory if they collide if it intersects the enemy's rectangular area then therefore there's a collision if it hasn't then we just make it the same color so I'm going to run it one more time and we should get the exact same thing exact same result it turns brown when we touch it so that is it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye